Hey everybody, I am J.P. Leonard. I'm Tyler Arsenault. And you are watching and listening or reading. If you're reading this, so <laughs> I'm sorry for you. It means your, your kids are asleep. <laughs> yeah. You've put the transcriptions on. Or your death. What? Mom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> or my wife, am I right? Uh, whatever you're doing, uh, first of all... Go to that YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Lafayette Comedy. Hit that subscribe. We're over 700. We're what? Getting, over 700. I remember in the early days of this Thousand. podcast, oh, I'd be, uh, I would always be saying like, hey, uh, I have more subscribers than Lafayette Comedy. No longer. Yeah, so. well, we have a team of Nigerians on the case. <laughs> and, uh, Look, tell Kuhu <laughs> Jensi that I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. like, subscribe, just subscribe. I don't care if you like it. I really don't. Hit subscribe, turn off the notifications. I don't care. Just comment. Do that. You want to call us fat? Get in, in line. Engage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm fat petite now, but uh, uh, and uh, this is episode 18. 18 with our old friend JT Habersat out of Austin. We're dying Texas. down here is legal now. Unless you're in Alabama, we were episode. Two episodes ago. <laughs> we were legal already. <laughs> Roll it. And we are back. It's like we never left. It's not like... Hey, well, <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. The mystique is gone. Uh, Tyler, what's been up, buddy? How are oh, you? Oh, dude, it's been a while since we did this. Yeah, this is, our last episode came out a month ago. Yeah. We've been busy on the road. So busy. Yeah, just signing autographs. Soccer. I got blisters on my feet from watching soccer. <laughs> from watching soccer. <laughs> That's because you need new Crocs. Yeah. Uh, Holes in my Crocs. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. No. I, uh, I've yeah. only, honestly, I've only done a few shows um, to catch up on since we last talked, uh, at least notable ones, of course. Yeah. Um, but I did. Uh, I opened up for our good old friend Brendan Gay from it Minnesoda. Yeah. Came down to Lake Charles. Where does he live now? Minnesota. I didn't know that. Yeah. Him and Chad he... Daniels are roommates. No. <laughs> They're not. They're the only people I've ever heard of from Minnesota. By the way. <laughs> what about the Vikings? Who? The Vikings. Oh, the football team. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, them too. <laughs> you, know, no. you, know, you meant like the Vikings. Yeah, the, the Vikings. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so I opened up for Brennan. It was an absolutely excellent time. This was my return to Library Riot oh, yeah. for the first time since the it got destroyed the by the, storm, yes. the tornado. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a little bit too. Yeah. I walked in and I looked at the, fl uh, my opening line was like, I was like, man, this place looks like it got hit by a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we just fixed the place. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Nice. Uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. I had a great set. There was a ton of people there. Brennan is... Every time I see this guy, he's better than the last man. One of my favorite people in comedy. We met him real early on, and he was yeah pretty green. I think only a couple years in, but had the ability he was still good. Yeah. to hustle and travel. And Those old beer garden days. Exactly. Well, yeah. even Steam oh, Press. Yeah, Steam Press. That's yeah, true. his yeah. first time was at Steam Press, and he did beer garden as well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, just it was. It's always great catching up with him. I always learned so much from him. Um, I will say this: he did this really cool thing that. Somebody who travels around, this is very smart. He had these like little table banners that he would put up on all the tables that had uh, QR codes yeah. on them. And if you scanned the QR code and showed him that you signed up for his mailing list, he gave you free merch. Dang. T-shirts. What? Now, look, I would not be giving away free T-shirts in mm -hmm. this economy, but Brendan Gay is doing it. He must have a hookup at the factory or something. <laughs> Fruit of the Loom. Gay. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, all right. His uh, last name is Gay. That's right. <laughs> we're dying down here, buddy. Oh, my God. Jesus. We're rusty down yeah, here. Yeah, we're rusty down here. Someone's going to get a tetanus shot after this. Uh, uh, but that was woo. fun. It was nice. Good to be back in that venue after so long off. Um, next up, uh, let's see. Uh, I traveled. Uh, I don't even think I traveled. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know. You drove from your house here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I did a stone drunk sober, but I think I had something before that. Yeah, Ian and Laura. Oh yeah, that's right. We did. Uh, we did the Thursday. We recorded a podcast and then uh, had a show in front of. I was about six, seven people. No, we had <laughs> way more than that. What? Yeah, for Ian and Laura. 
Yeah, but what how- was I thinking of? All the other shows. Uh, <laughs> every, every other show here on a Thursday. <laughs> other- no, we were good. We probably had like, what, 40, 50? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was way that better. Was good. Than, yeah. yeah. Way was better good. than I led everyone to believe just now. Yeah. Um, that show was great. Ian is so much fun to talk shop yeah. with. That episode's going to be fun. Yeah. We did a lot of comedy bullshit. That's going to be episode number 19. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. crazy. Um, and then Stone Drunk Sober, I got to do the guest spot up top, uh, which was really cool because we had uh, some newer acquaintances from like the Houston scene, like yeah, Mike, we had, we had, uh, like three Mike or four David. Houston comedians. That's right. Mike David was here. Uh, Ad Hodge Mike was Ryan. here. Mike Ryan. That's Mike right. Ryan. Yeah, I don't know why I said Mike David. Mike Ryan was here. Two first names. Yeah, Easy to get fine. confused. We'll call him Mike. Yeah. Mike. Mike was here. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mike. Uh, that show was great. Um, it was absolutely stellar. Yeah. Absolutely stellar. I did. Um, I did a. A don't tell rip off show. It's not really. It's just like a little secret show that they're doing in Lake Charles at a at a real estate uh, office. Uh, Jacob Gidry of Lake Charles Comedy is putting it on, and never heard of. Man, that was amazing. No lie. Damn. I mean, nice. pack the place. There was only twelve seats, but it was completely packed. Stand, That's the show you were thinking. Standing of. room on that is <laughs> standing room only. <laughs> it was in a closet, standing room only. Um, no, it was great, man. I got to, I got to again uh, stretch my legs. So grateful. This has been the year of the headlining set for Tyler Arsenault. Nice. I, I've been, I think I did like probably thirty plus, close nice. to that. Um, just really, really coming in my own with my act. Hell yeah! Throwing in the new jokes in there. You know, been writing a lot, trying to bring at least a new joke or a new line every single open mic. Um, not always successful, <laughs> but trying to make it happen, man. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, not a whole lot going on. Just the weeklies. Yeah. Um, just kind of, you know, taking care of the home front right now, but getting my sets in when I can. Um, got some cool stuff coming up we could talk about later. But Yeah. Hey, what about yeah. you, man? I know you've been all over the place, which is why we haven't recorded. Dude, I have. Because yeah. I'm like, hey, we know we're going to record. And you're like, sorry, I'm hanging out with famous people. Well, I wouldn't call my wife famous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so uh, I had oh, Ian Lar. That was great. It was good to have him back. And then the next night we had, um, I did Stone versus Drunk versus Sober in Lake Charles. I would host that. Honestly, hands down, you can ask Jacob, the best show Lake Charles has ever seen. Wow. It was phenomenal. Sold out? Like, uh, as, as, oh, as close as, as much can as can be. Yeah. But man, that, that show was so hot from from my opening host set uh, to Jacob to the end. The crowd, like I've never had so many people come up and like not just to me, but to all the comedians. Like it was it was a magical show. And I told Jacob, I'm like, this is what you need. This is going to keep you rolling. And I think it has. So that was great. Then uh, the next week we had Ian Bag. Dude, that dude, I, I I watched him do hour and a half. I can't tell you if he did a joke or if it was all crowd it was work. All cr- or maybe I knew, he just, I knew that was going to happen. But I think he makes it look like crowd work. And and, yeah. and a lot of it is. But he destroyed this place. Stan and O. Uh, it, it was so good. It was me, uh, Isaac Cozell, uh, uh, Ian's feature, uh, and then Ian. And it was, it was phenomenal. And then after we went eat at Mel's, I've never seen two people... Uh, his his feature, uh, his last name's Nguyen, not spelled like our Nguyen's, uh, John Nguyen, uh, but um, it's, uh, it's 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 I forget how it's spelled. Not like N G U. So yeah. what, he wasn't Vietnamese. <laughs> he, he is. Oh, oh but he is? spelled differently. <laughs> oh, really? I, but I think he has ties to like uh, Texas or Houston or whatever, uh, or maybe like Louisiana. Anyway, I never watched so many people. Two people eat so much food. Like, yeah. full breakfasts and a chicken fried steak. And, and I'm just like, <laughs> it was great. So, really good hang. Next night, we had Mia Jackson here. You were here. Bro. Very seldom do we tell people, your hour's ready. Yeah. That that was a wonderful show. So yeah. good. And then she did our podcast, so she's going to be episode gonna be number 20. That's going to be a great 20. episode. What a delight she was. A so complete good. complete treat. And then I ended up going to, um, uh, that next day, I left to go to Austin. I went to Austin for two nights. I did... Uh, uh, com- uh, at the creek, I did a um, uh, Matt Ross's show. It's called Comedians on the Rise. Killer lineup, killer comedians. Did that. And then where was po- that at? Uh, at the Creek okay. Cave. And then popped over to uh, the Mothership after that to go see uh, old Greg Fitzsimmons. All right. So our buddy Greg Fitzsimmons uh, got to watch his last headline set. It was so good. Me and old door guy Johnny Diaz. We're 
you get your bracelets and like, hey, you know, we're we've got tickets, you know, they're like, Are you got tickets ready? And like, no, we're on the guest list. They're like, all right, you stand right here. And then literally we the first people we sat against the front rail all the way on the left. The first people in and we we're like now this is fun. He just released the new hours. We'll so talk about that later. Was yes. this new though? Oh no, no, it was all new. Yeah. Wow. I think he may have had a sprinkle, but you couldn't you yeah. couldn't tell. And it I was, watched the but it was right yeah, so it. that's awesome. So good. So we we had a g- amazing time at that show and then we had a good hang after that. Uh Monday night ended up going to um uh the creek again. Did the uh, clocked out non PM show. It was great. Like it's just it's cool being over there and get all these comedians like you're in you know you're in the green room hanging out, everyone's together you and then so you know, many people and you know, Cam Patterson walks in and he's just you know, they're just it's a great hangover yeah. there, you know. Did that, of course. Hit up my favorite restaurant. Hit up Bucky's once or twice, and then came Bucky's back. Bucky's is your favorite restaurant. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not. Like, I, like I like Bucky's as much as the next guy, but I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite deli. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, my favorite restaurant in Austin is called ATX Cochina. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, is that Mexican? Uh, yes, yes, it is a is uh, Tex-Mex or authentic. Uh, authentic. It's modern Mexican. It is my favorite. What place. is modern Mexican? Uh, they don't wear sombreros. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we don't remember the Alamo. <laughs> Clip oh, it. Yeah. All right, Baby. got it. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so did that. Came back, and then we had Stone versus Drunk, and then I end up uh, the next week uh, end up going to uh, Houston. So me, uh, Drew Gocho. Ken Edwards, John Merrifield, we went to Do You Look Like. What a crew. Yeah. What a, Dude, yeah, what my, a crew. Shocks in my car. And y'all all lost You Look Like, I hear. We all lost it. <laughs> Every one of y'all lost round one? It's not that we <laughs> lost it. It's we did not advance. <laughs> How can you lose it if you've never had it? <laughs> anyway. What sucks about that is, honestly, all of y'all are excellent comedians, but it just goes to show you how ruthless that game yeah. can be sometimes. So uh, it, the guy I lost to made jokes about former fat me and they worked. How? I don't know. It just, it, it he had <laughs> stuff, and I was like, this doesn't even, I even said I'm one of the I'm skinny now. <laughs> I was like, I'm skinny now. Like, it didn't even apply. And I was just like, man. So, um, but before that, uh, I got to do a, my fourth Don't Tell show in Austin, this outdoor venue. I was not dressed for it. Everyone else was in shorts and, like, T-shirts. Everyone looks like they're playing a game of pickup. And I'm out there and, like. <laughs> your jacket. Your fucking, yeah, my little. My your little, calcanate pin. Yeah. <laughs> and, bruh. It, but it was, it was great. Uh, uh, probably one of my best sets the last six months because awesome. everyone was on it. They were eating up everything. So did that. Did uh, you look like? And then we all went. Did the uh, the uh, late night dirty show at the Seeker Group. Woke up the next morning. Everyone was up on time. Four comedians on time, and we wow. came back. And then uh, we had you look like here. Uh, me and Will Loden co-hosted it. What a banger of a show! I heard it was the best one here yet, right? As it was. Far as I would aud- say audience attendance. Audience attendance. Yeah, we were so we we're almost sold out That's in crazy. here. That's uh, crazy. It was packed in. That crowd was so hot. And from the get go, me and Will, we were just like out for you blood. hosted. Yeah, me and Will. Wow, so I'm jelly Daniel, belly right now, dude. It was fun. I'm jelly. I, belly I told him his breast sure. milk looks like it's salty. <laughs> that was my that was my opening joke. I like that. And then it That's just started. Good. And then I. And so you had uh, you had Aaron Helts against John Merrifield. John won. Uh, you had Emily East against uh, Josh Ewing, saw some which clips was from that. a battle, saw and clips. it was great. Emily won that. Uh, you had um, Ken versus Ken versus a uh, Coleman. Ken won that, you know that. And then they had the the return of Brock White Lions against Lester A. Bear. Could not Brock do did it. not win that. He could not do it. And then uh, so Aaron did a set, uh, did a uh, um, a stand up set. Maggie did a stand up set, killed. Don did a sit down set, <laughs> and destroyed this place. Uh, yeah, destroyed this place. Yeah. Uh, I heard he did a callback to like the roast sets that had happened or something. Yeah. so it kind of like helped it, him. It yeah, was so it was good. Awesome. And then, uh, and then they did the uh, the crowd roast, which since it was Will Loden's birthday, they roasted him. Oh, that's and awesome. And so uh, Lester and Ken advance. It was close. Emily almost. The finals was close, or the the the, 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 the crowd roast. Yeah, and then um, and then it got to the end, and then uh, Benjamin Daniel did twenty minutes. They sang Happy Birthday to Will, and then Lester against Ken, and uh, yeah, and then Ken wow. took it took it home. And then, uh, yeah, other than that, I just got back from Austin today. Not a show, but I took my kid to see Slipknot because I'm a good dad. The 11-year-old 
My first time seeing Slipknot, how I they, was How do they know what Slipknot is? TikTok, bro. <laughs> the TikTok. So, yeah, we had a good time. So That's incredible. Is Joey Jordanson still the drummer in that? No, he died. <laughs> I think I'd do that. Wow. I think I'd do Jesus that. Christ. I think I'd do that, yeah. They replaced him with Max Weinberg's son. I don't remember his name. I don't know Max And then Weinberg. he recently left, and now it's the guy... He, he, Elon or wait, Elon he, Musk? He, yeah, Elon Musk is playing. <laughs> uh, different South African. Uh, but uh, but uh, he was the drummer for Simple Tour. He is a beast. Max Cavalera. No, that's the singer. <laughs> Let me handle Igor this. Cavalera. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this episode <laughs> is brought to you by... Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Episode 18. <laughs> Jeez, I hope Slipknot's not watching. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or or Sepultura, as I'm sure uh, Tyler Sepultura. would have said. That's <laughs> <laughs> Episode 18. Our old buddy, JT Habersat. JT. All right. We are here with the one and only JT Habersat. What's up, man? How, How are, are you, guys? buddy? I'm, I'm good. I'm a little road weary, but good. Yeah, so y'all were in uh, New Orleans last night. New Orleans last night and Mobile, Alabama Friday. Oh. And y'all is? Oh, with Brian Posehn. All right. Yeah. Never heard of her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we have you and Brian Posehn here, the return of Posehn. You've yeah. done this room with I have. Eddie Pepitone. I, Eddie Pepitone, and, and, and I, I forget one other time. I don't know if I did it. I want to say Oh, you it did it with Ty Larson that one time, too. <laughs> Never heard of her. I um, <laughs> don't remember that at all. Like, not even a little bit. Like, not even a small amount. <laughs> no, I, I think I did it by amount. myself one time, too. Um, oh, cool. It's always been fun. It's been a great room. Yeah. And, uh, I was thinking back, because the promoters for the last two shows, uh, Matt and... Stu. Stu. Stu and, uh, and Zeke was on the shows. Yeah. And Zeke, the last time I've been mobile, was like eight years ago. And oh, so wow. I like wow. it's been that long because we went, we picked up, we borrowed his mom's car to drive us to New Orleans because it's bigger because we're giant mammals. Yeah. And I had stayed at his mom's house the last time eight years ago with Brian Ziola and his mom <laughs> made his pancakes and she oh. came out again. And I was like, I'm having the weirdest. Dude, he told us to you- ask you about the pancakes. So <laughs> he told us that. He yeah, said, we hung out when with you him, see uh, JT, Zeke ask said- him. Yes. He said, ask uh, JT about the pancakes. Yeah, I never met Zeke before. And that time I think Zeke was like 23. Young, yeah. And uh, he was just kind of starting out. We did a blind mule. And oh, he, yeah. he said, uh, you know, I was drinking pretty heavy, and Brian didn't drink at all. So it was one in the morning. We we're still there. And they finally did last call. And he said, You can stay in my house. So I've, got a, I've got a weird side attic. And I'm like, What is a side what? attic? <laughs> like, that's, uh, that's his like way to nerve, say, but, I yeah. got a bed for you. Look at a side <laughs> attic. Like, oh, my grandpa has a bad side attic, too. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all right. Flip it. This is, this is how our podcast is. See, that's is, how I know you've been way. on the road all weekend. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is Still got that hot. He caught yeah. something that, from Norman. Hot, <laughs> hot, hot heat. I'm also gay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, so we ended up going to his house, and it's like the middle of nowhere road. And uh, the side attic was just this standalone kind of evil dead shed house. <laughs> and I remember I had to take a ladder upstairs to the second that's floor. That's why he called it, like it an loft. attic. It was an that's attic. why he called it yeah, an attic. Yeah, and Brian was like, I can't. Get up there, and I think Brian just slept on the down part. But yeah, we both woke up early, and his mom like uh, made us pancakes and was very nice. That's yeah. awesome. Um, but I hadn't seen him in eight years. I was like, "You're yeah. and now." He kind of runs a lot of stuff around. Mobile. Yeah, he, like, he, he does. It kind of helped like the there's a venue they lost in, but uh, he kind of does kind of kicking up it again. So yeah. yeah. But you and I've been working together like a decade. Dude, a lot. So you were the first people, man. So this is back at. Sidebar slash poets where poets. we first did shows. Mm-hmm. Then I think one of the first shows we did, we brought you to the feet and seat. That was with Mike uh, Weeby. Yeah, and it, it was freezing. It was so I think it was Ziola was there too. It yep. was so cold. <laughs> Everyone was in uh, jackets, multiple jackets. You can see yeah. your breath while you're on stage. I remember and that. we had to pause the show for the train to pass. Yes. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> I remember Mike Weeby wearing a giant, like one of those army, like yes. G.I. Joe. Pull, like the <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Hood. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. 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 Uh, good. Good times. Time. Yeah. We've yeah. had a lot of fun shows through there. Then you've done like Steam Press. You did, you did JP's. Yeah. We we had the conversation. Um, uh, wait, who were we with when we had the conversation about the puking on the bar at JP's? I didn't puke on the no, bar. No. It was related to that. <laughs> we, we just we just had this conversation, but. The time that you and White Cotton mm-hmm. and others were there, Ziola was and, with us, on and it was one. right after a, a local comedian uh, uh, killed himself. Yes, I Wait, we talked this. about this with Young Blood on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, and and White Cotton does a suicide joke. He gets off. You go up, <laughs> and then 
someone goes up to White Cotton and says, "Hey, man, the reason that joke was kind of weird because like two weeks ago, one of the comics killed himself." And from the back of the room, interrupting your set, he's like, "What? A comedian killed themselves and no one fucking told me?" And it was <laughs> my favorite part. Yeah. Yes, that was right after Hell Yes Fest. Yeah. And yeah. Ziola and I, uh, we had had a, our car caught fire <laughs> when we were in Florida. And uh, Jay, the three of us were on tour. The car, we were at a stop so, stoplight, and there's smoke, and then suddenly the car was just on fire. Holy shit. And his Toyota Yaris. Hit its and weight so, limit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Dude, we put a us. lot of hard miles on that car. <laughs> Brian and I were in that car in some not safe situations, like driving from like Salt Lake City over the mountains. You're supposed to have chains in your tires. Like, we barely have yeah. tires yeah, you on this tires. thing to Denver. Like, we were just insane. But, um, but yeah, that car finally caught fire, and then we woke up the next morning, and at the time, Jay was dating a flight attendant, so he left a note, and he was like, I'll see you in New Orleans. <laughs> he just caught a flight because he could do that, and was just out. And so we didn't see Jay until the day before that show. We saw him in New, yeah. New Orleans because Brian and I rented a car with the help of his parents who saved us, and because uh, his car had to be like rebuilt. They had to put a new engine in it. Jesus. And, and um, we... Uh, didn't have much time to catch up with Jay, and so it was like straight from that to this. Yeah, I think we even like y'all did it on a Sunday because that's when we did the show. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we did Hell Yes Fest Friday and Saturday, and then yeah. we came straight here to Sunday. And um, Brian and I knew about it. And once Jay went into that bit, we were in the back going, "Oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, here we go." We, we told the story because Derek Sheen did a bit mm -hmm. like maybe a week or two later. And it was great because the kind of time had passed. But he did a beautiful suicide bit, and mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, everyone's just doing suicide bits and like really. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you kind of brought it down. Yeah. Good comma yeah, yeah. dark <laughs> comics, so I mean that's gonna <laughs> kind of happen. But yeah, I do remember that. That was that's in my last book, which ends in like 2014. So it, was yeah, it would have been like the very then. first year. So yeah. that's that's ten years ago. Yeah, crazy, Jeez, crazy, yeah. crazy. And I'd worked with you before that. Like that, we had done a lot of shows before. Well, that, that was right when I started. So oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, that was, that yeah. was pretty that early wasn't on. The first show, cause cause the, I knew all those guys. The Sunday no, show was our first show though the sunday show at the hookah lounge that was the first show yeah john yeah. started that yeah show. so i think we did the feed and seed and then we did the uh <laughs> yeah. jp you know it's wild i realized everybody was talking about the beer garden like i never did the beer garden i was supposed to yeah and then it like oh, you got weird. hit with you had the last minute cancellations because they're licensing that, that's how i got shit um that's how i got Posein. uh Posein yeah here, here. Because I was about to become co-owner of that place the day before. Yeah. We saw, cause I we remember saw, how stressed <coughs> out you were. I was like, oh, no. We, we, saw, we sold 200 tickets in like 18 hours. Mm -hmm. I was like, we've been hacked by the Russians. <laughs> we, put a, we put a second show on. And I was like, oh, yeah, an August show in the summer outdoors. So I rented a camper. That was going to be the green room. Day before, we have 400 tickets sold. Jeez. They shut it down. I was... About to become a co-owner. What saved me was my dad was dying, so I was driving back and forth to Florida. Yeah, I remember this. So that delayed my paperwork, and then um, I was like at work, freaking out. I closed my office door. I called the DoubleTree, and I was like, "Hey, because like, we had started doing like a, we were doing like a monthly Wednesday here in here, no, yeah, yeah. But it was like just local people, and I was like, "Would you happen to have this open tomorrow?" Like, yeah, we had this big boxing event and it got canceled, and I was like, "I am putting." 500 people. We had to open more tickets, and that was it. And nice. I, I don't remember the second show because <laughs> yeah. the, the GM was, was pouring me glasses I was of say. scotch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. how stressed out you were and how close you were to that, too, because you were like, I think it might have. There was a chance of rain a week out or something. You were looking at oh, yeah. sides for yeah, the, yeah. the beer garden tent. Because that's and it. It's stupid doing outside. And then I was like, "What happened?" Yeah, <laughs> I felt so and like, bad. I, I told Ryan when we, in the lobby, I was like, "Look, this club looks totally different because this white or reflective wallpaper was here. I had no up lights. We yeah. just had a spotlight, three spotlights. So it was horrible. This yeah. they didn't even have the speakers mounted They're on stands. Uh, but we, it was. They were going to do great. boxing in here. No, in the uh, the convention. Center. Oh, okay. So, so it was like that means they have. Thing. Yeah, okay, they gotcha. Room, so, yeah. <laughs> I can't try this picture. Box yeah, in here. <laughs> was was <laughs> the brick here goes. when you were here last? Oh, that's standard for any club. That but, but this no, is new. Um, that that's came, new. Uh, yeah, that came the weekend after you and Eddie were here. Yeah, I think I, I don't think yeah. you've seen it yet. It so is that brick. real brick or is that the no, the like, laminate yeah, bullshit? Yeah. Okay, come on. The, yeah, <laughs> the funny. I love this club at Club Underground in Denver. Has that? I don't know if you ever done that. Uh, really fun room. It. It's really really fun. Uh, I've done a couple of weekends there, and last time I was there with Adam, Kate, and Holland, we got on stage, and it had, it was so hot that weekend it started to warp. <laughs> it started to grill cheese over, and I was like, <laughs> "This isn't even real brick." Yeah. What am I on? Freeze Company? Like, what that's the fuck funny. is going on right here? No, no. Yeah, that's like thin plywood. 
thin. It's, it's like, like texture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, so it's not laminate. No, right. No, it's no, not no. like a sticker, but let's no, just talk yeah. about the wall for the rest of yeah, the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so like a veneer. <laughs> you're saying yeah. it's like a. So that was the week after you and Pepper Tone. Because I had because I had Dusty Slay on one night, mm-hmm. and then I had uh, you and Eddie the next night, and then the next weekend I walked in and it was up. And the, I didn't the first time Eddie and I were here, or the second time. Second time. Second time. The last time. So last year, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was wild. That we did a bunch of markets with your help that we had never done before, and Isaac. Yeah, yeah. Because Ella helped us. We did yeah, Homa. Yeah. That was that was a wild, fun show. That they came out. Uh, yeah. But I remember the stage. If you've ever been on that stage, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was a giant snapping turtle <laughs> yeah, show right there. <laughs> and Eddie, I love Eddie. Eddie had never done uh, New Orleans before. Okay. And I had to convince him. I'm like, it'll be fine. I'm like, we're doing some rural markets too. And he's like, they're gonna kill me. I'm like, no, it'll be fine. <laughs> And that crowd was so fun, but Eddie went out there because he's such a city guy, and they had this giant snapping turtle shell, and he goes, what is this, an armadillo? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And people didn't know if he was fucking around. He really thought it was an armadillo oh my shell. Oh, hilarious, and I was like, dude. It's a snapping turtle. They have turtles in L.A. It's a snapping yeah. turtle. Oh, yeah. my God. I laughed that's so a, hard. That's I'm just, funny. I'm just melting on the side of the stage from laughter. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but those shows were really fun, and I forget what the other market was. It was a venue. I think it shut down. Y'all, no, y'all did uh, Lake Charles? Library Riot? It wasn't Lake Charles. No, y'all didn't do that one? It okay. was, uh, I've done Lake Charles before on my own, but um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it all kind of blends, but um, those those rural markets were really fun. They, were uh, really yeah. they did uh, North Shore. You did Mandeville. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mandeville. That's there you right. go. With yeah. Josh Watts. Yeah, yeah. what yeah. was that called? The arcade. The, the venue closed. Yeah, the, I think. yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they were yeah, really he great. He sold it. Yeah, hideaway, it was really great. The hideaway. Hideaway. Yeah. Hideaway. Yeah. He sold it. Someone else bought it, and then it was gone. So Sad story. So yeah, so you you're you're on the road with Posein right now. Yeah. You've been uh on the road for years with Pepitone, which is half a decade now, which is which wild. Which is crazy. Which awesome. is wild. Yeah. Crazy. And yeah. again, and, and we we talked about it uh this weekend on the road like I still put in ruins next to next probably my top 3 specials. Mm-hmm. Uh and it's probably the one I've watched the most out of every special. What's funny is I uh, before Eddie and I even met uh, no, not in rooms. For, for, for the masses. For the masses. Yeah, yeah. For the masses. Yeah. Sorry. Before Eddie and I even met, I had only seen uh, Great Stillness, the one before that yeah. it was audio, because yeah. Stand Up Records had put it out on vinyl, and so I'd heard that. But I'd never seen In Ruins until we started talking. Mm-hmm. I wanted to book him for my fest altercation fest and so i went back i'm like i should check out he's got a newer special that was the newest one at the time yeah and i watched in ruins at my house it was on netflix i was like jesus yeah this is so good like he was doing the 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 existential donkey voice or whatever he's like (laughs) the economy's gonna destroy and i'm just like on my house going wow (laughs) this is so you know next level it's great and um i feel lucky so he just taped his new special too yeah. in Chicago. I was out for that, and it's going to be it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a monster. I can't Which, wait, man. That's and it's awesome. and it, he's got uh, Steve Finearts who who directed the Bitter Buddha, directed the nice the new special. Uh, I think he Steve yeah. also did the last one, but um, yeah, we he was just in the zone. Yeah, and and I'm so excited to see. You. And thank you again for convincing him to do Stone versus Drunk last year at Alta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like that must have been so fun. That was yeah. that was. Fun. I didn't want to. I never want to promise with that stuff, but I always know once people get in there. Yeah, I can yeah. usually last a woman. The, dude, it, that show is so incredible. Yeah, it shows so much. Stone vs. Drunk yeah. or Sober. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But that, to have them on there and Ben Roy and it's just like, what? yeah, 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 it was, yeah. It was crazy. No, thanks for bringing it in, man. It was, yeah, it no was a blast. Uh, so let's talk about. It. We brought up altercation. How's uh, you, you doing again this year? How's yeah. things? How do you find time to do it? Uh, the time part is the hardest part. Yeah, honestly, right. not that I have to tell you. You got you know, yeah, you, yeah. You're yeah. producing all the time and working. Um, it's I don't know. This year is. I'm really excited about everything that is looking to be there. Uh, I'm waiting on some scheduling stuff. Like I basically, one of my, my big headliner headliner is somebody that I've wanted to have for a very long time. And they're Chris just Kattan? waiting on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Carl Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob just, Snyder. Oh. <laughs> they're just waiting on uh, a bigger national tour thing to solidify date wise. So I'm, they like, they really want to do it. Nice. And I'm just waiting for that final thumbs up. Nice. And it just keeps getting drawn push yeah, because of yeah. just waiting and so i'm gonna announce one way or the other i have to announce in august yeah usually i would have announced by now but um but also we got so many applicants so that i needed the extra time because it's this, just like yeah, yeah. so much time no, to go yeah. through everything and shout out to you know my little altercation punk comedy crew homies Kristen lighty josh mcclain 
English Matt. They, they've all yeah. been screening videos for me. Yeah, and helping. And I then, had fun and last year doing it. Yeah, well, I, I, I should probably fun. send you some. I was more. like, yeah, fun? this is gonna be great. And like six in, I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can only imagine what kind of what things people think it's okay to submit. Oh, boy. The best, I'll send you some of the quotes from, because they put them into like a database, and then the ones that they think are a good fit, they send to me, and then I make the final determination and everything. And then I screen my own. But Josh said one, he said, this dude brought a sword on stage and still bombed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then Kristen Lighty's are the funniest. She'll just be like, uh, I don't even want to do a disservice to it. But but she's she's the last batch I sent her, she smashed back. She said, I never want to hear a man talk again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but it's you know, it's just a, an insane amount of work and post COVID sponsors are harder yeah. to wrangle, you know, just because like the live uh beast as far as booze sponsors and stuff like that it's just so, it's either also I'm a kind of a a victim of the scale of things where yeah. the the shows usually typically every year will pack out yeah. and a lot of times we have to turn people away but also it's a 200 cap room yeah so you get a sponsor it's like well how many people are there it's like well 200 uh that doesn't sound like a lot to and a, it's a like, national yeah. Yeah. but yeah. also I'm like but if you were there and saw it and the ravenous like and then yeah. the dedication. I'm like, all those 200 people are going to buy your stuff right. and tell other people. But you can't, when you just hear the numbers, it just goes on a... Yeah, yeah. Like, it's tough. So, um... What, how can you fight against that? What is, you can't really, yeah. man. I, and I don't. You know, like, I, the bummer is, I, like, I had a sponsor last year that came out, and they've been sponsoring a lot of comedy-related stuff, and they came to me, and we worked out a deal. And that was great, because that covered one of my headliners off mm -hmm. the bat, you know? This year, they're, they overextended themselves, because mm -hmm. they were trying a bunch of stuff, and even though they had success with us, they're like, we really want to do it, we have to take this year off, but next year, which yeah. is fine. I know you're talking cool. about. Cool, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, well, that's a headliner now I have to come up with yeah. out of my pocket or the door money or what, which is fine. You know, I'm not, no one's holding a gun to my head and saying do the festival. So I'm, 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 we're talking, this has been coming up, but I'm looking at quarter one to, uh, 2025 to, yeah. to do mine. Cause oh, I was okay. planning one. I like, you're saying maybe December. Yeah. I yeah, wasn't I was sure how out you were with that. I, so. I'm just going to wait and see, but, uh, I think I'm looking at quarter one, kind of get through the year and everything, but, mm -hmm. uh, looking at doing it, but I'm taking a lot from your playbook, yeah. you know, and like, and doing it like that. I'm gonna do like a three day thing. Mm -hmm. M depends, but like, you know, like, one or two shows on a Thursday, and then three on a Saturday, Friday, three on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we, Tyler's going to do a brunch show. Yeah. It's all yeah. sounding very familiar. You want to yeah. hear my idea for a brunch show? <laughs> the McEwens. No. Come in. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just me and <laughs> No, I got to check this out. This is brilliant. <laughs> Don't yeah, set it up ready? too high. This Go ahead. Serial killers. Okay. And you serve cereal, cereal to everyone. All right. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. it's thank pretty you. Good. Thank you. I like Appreciate it. it. I like Trademarked. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was excited to hear that you're going to pull the trigger because you yeah. have such good producer blood. Yeah. That thank I'm you, like, man. you know, a lot of people say, I want to start a festival. I'm like, yeah. You should. Good yeah. luck. You know, do it Do it two years in a row and then we'll talk. Yeah, yeah. You know, not to sound like an asshole, but like, no, but I just know how much goes into it but anyway to the point like i'm ex i'm really excited about stuff we have this year yeah. uh, i'm just okay. waiting for the the final like <laughs> rain to fall on the cement so that i can be yep. like yeah, all right it's done you know so um hoping to announce in august that is my plan right now nice yeah. Uh, and so you're here tonight with uh, Brian Posehn. Yeah. Uh, how long you been on the road uh, recently? Um, for that? We've been working together a bunch this year, actually. Uh, Brian and I tend to do more just like long weekends or club yeah. weekends. So usually if we're doing one nighters like this run, uh, we'll go out for like four days. Nice. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of city winery clubs, which is oh, like yeah, kind yeah. of a chain. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've done one of one or two of those with Pepitone in New York City and stuff, but I guess Patton. Uh, shares management with Brian and Patton did a run Patton Oswalt did a run of just city wineries and so Brian was like oh what are those about and so we yeah. started doing a couple of those we did Philly how big is that um, they're pretty big those are pretty big rooms. say if Patton's doing it's got to be kind of big they're pretty big, big. Right? They're, they're, yeah. most of them are like five to six hundred oh, oh, yeah. like, oh, but so they like do like an, an early show and a late show if they want like a small like a theater mid, yeah. Yeah, and, it's, nice. and it's a chain they're, they're in a lot of different markets and they keep adding them wow um, cool but they're they're exactly. They're, they're like a, instead of a brewery, they're a winery. So they're a little upscale. Yeah. Sometimes they can have a little bit of a finger in the air. It can be a little buttoned down for comedy sometimes, and it's those picnic table oh, setups. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it can be a little sterile, but they're always oh, fun. Yeah. They're always yeah on time. They're always good huh. uh, in that regard. Very pro. So Brian and I just did a run of those. We did uh, 
Nashville, and then <laughs> we flew into Nashville, did the show, got up next morning, flew to Atlanta, did one there. Damn. Uh, we did one in Philly. We just did a really great club in Burlington, Vermont, a few months ago. It's the Burlington Comedy Club. Uh, we did Illinois, uh, this new club that opened out there called the Comedy Vault in Batavia, which That's is like an it's in it's yeah, in the hour hour uh, due west from O'Hare Airport, just in the suburbs. Okay. Uh, and it was awesome. It was nice. just a blast. So, no, we've been trying to work together as much as we can this year. Um, and, you know, Eddie's my guy, um, but he had some co-headline dates in the works for a long time with Chris Gethard. Oh, nice. So it kind of freed yeah, me yeah. up to, to work with Brian. Yeah. And um, I just did a run with Lydia Lunch for two weeks, which yeah, was Yeah, I saw wild. that. Yeah, you've done a lot with her, too. Uh, that was the first time working on the road. Oh, we, the road. We've yeah. been friends for stuff, a while. Didn't y'all do some stuff in Austin? No? Uh, no, I kind of presented her shows okay. when she came through. Okay. She came through with her okay. band and stuff. Yeah. And so I would help promote it. And she had done my talk show during COVID when I was doing that, when I couldn't tour. Yeah. But uh, it was the first time she'd ever brought a comic out on the road. And so that was... How did I go over? Good. It was intimidating because her crowd are elder goths. Yeah. Mm. And very much, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just kind of... You know, uh, I feel like there's some crossover there. No, total. With me, it was fine. Okay. Like I leaned heavy into my story stuff. Yeah. And the fact that I I didn't just do like 10 minutes, but I did a solid 35 minutes. We kind of split the bill. Yeah. So we each did 35 to 40. Oh wow. And um, the fact that they knew it was a together tour and not just some dude on one or two cool. shows. Yeah. yeah. They they were more willing to give it a chance, and then I just had to not mess it up. Some sometimes I could tell it would mess with me a bit because I mean, here's where the laugh's supposed to be because I'm used to comedy rooms now, but I could tell everyone was listening and intent, but the laugh didn't hit as it usually mm. does, but it's just the audience. And yeah. at the end, they're like, that was amazing, and I felt like, Ugh. yeah, you yeah. know? Um, that being said, one or two shows, the promoters did put comics on to open, and they ate the biggest death. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Let's name them. Oh. Right, no, no <laughs> I won't name them, but this one Tag poor em. guy, this one poor dude had promoted the, the show really hard. He was like a punk rocker comedian guy who's maybe two years in and he, he got up and uh typically i would bring lydia up direct and he was like you know you want to do a club style where i'll go up in between and yeah da, da, da. and this dude went over like sure and this dude went up and he did 10 minutes to silence like just and it wasn't that he had bad material necessarily and but he, he just, was just trying to drop punk references and the the crowd was not having it yeah. they just were not Having it, and He's I'm like, watching. I'm like, God <laughs> damn, it's so brutal. Why'd he do the whole ten? Right. <laughs> yeah. no, he did it. He, he stuck it out, and then he got off stage and brought me up, and I could see in his eyes. I'm like, just hang in there, kid. Like, don't. Also, don't, go don't do jokes between us. Oh no, 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 <laughs> just no, no, bring no. us up. Well, that was the thing. So then I did my time, and it went good. It went fine, and then I turn around to bring the mic back, and I see Lydia standing in the wings, and she's like, Bur no, she no, was no, like, no. all right. So yeah, I brought, yeah, I brought yeah, him yeah. up, yeah. and I went to him immediately, and I was like, dude. Like, I know that was rough. Don't get in your head. Like, it's a tough crowd. It's, you know, and he's like, man, she, <laughs> I said, what do you want me to bring you up with? And she said, no, I've seen enough. You don't, you can, you can relax. Dude, <laughs> that's like, hilarious. Oh, 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 that's oh, hilarious. Just oh, the dagger, oh. like, ah, ah. I'm uh, like, do you want to use my gun or yours? Dude, you it know? was, uh, and I felt so bad for the kid. Um, oh, man. So there were some moments like that. It was definitely, I mean, not that. I think it's just because I've toured with so many bands and stuff yeah. that my aesthetic or whatever of comedy is like I can, I can read towards what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, so it went pretty well. Like she wants to, we're going to try and do more in the fall. That's if awesome. We can our schedule. She's in Europe right now, so our schedules are yeah. always crazy. But but yeah, that was a fun challenge. So, but busy. You know, yeah. Always busy. I want to know about toys. Yeah. Sure. What do you want to know? I want to know what's that. Is that something you always wanted to do? Did uh -uh. you? When did you? Where does no. that come from? How so did I make you custom learn? action figures. So I. Um, during COVID, I couldn't tour, and it was my buddy Mishka Shibali's birthday. Our birthdays are right a day Absolutely. apart. Absolutely, love Mishka. And so I wanted to make him something unique, and there's another comic on the East Coast that I used to do shows with a long time ago uh, that I met through Jay Shinoin, who's still my close buddy and uh, uh, stand-up records guy. And so that dude had started making these custom action figures, and I was like, that's intriguing. Like, how do you make... Because I was always a toy fan. Yeah. And uh, I had a decent amount of collectibles, but um, I had messaged him. I'm like, hey, how much for a figure for my buddy Mishka for his birthday? And he quoted me, and I was like, that seems expensive, <laughs> especially for somebody that, you know, I used to kind for of... For a doll? I mean, we had fallen out of touch, and I was like... <laughs> We're kind of tight, right? <laughs> no, we weren't. But, okay. but we had also... But we had history. You know, yeah, we had done yeah, shows yeah. together. We had weekend runs yeah. together with Jay and but stuff. But he's not shaving So I was like, okay. <laughs> and I'm such a DIY guy. I was like, I'll just figure this out. Like, I'll just nice. make my own. And so I... I 
trial and error, just figured out a way to make a backing board thing. And I have I designed limited edition posters for all our runs, so I knew the design skills. I could yeah, yeah. make it, yeah. the the layout. And so I just made Mishka as a zombie. I just found a zombie <laughs> action figure, painted it a little bit so it looked like his shirt, and gave it twelve guitars, and gave, gave it yeah, so eleven to, eleven to sell, yeah. one to keep, <laughs> and a truck that doesn't work. <laughs> and I uh, I made that and I mailed it to him, and he was like, "Dude, this is amazing," you know. And 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 then that other comic I talked to about commissioning one immediately got furious with me and blocked me. Mm. Because I had the audacity to just make my own. And I, and I messaged him. <laughs> I actually, when I, when I posted it, I actually was like, shout out to this guy for, he's he's a Jedi. I'm just uh, messing yeah. around. Because uh, people saw it and they were like, how do I get one? Like they started kind of buzzing. Yeah. And I tagged him and messaged him. I'm like, go to this guy. Like he's good. And he messaged me. He's like, that's not cool. I'm like, I'm trying to help, like give you wow. a shout out. But uh, whatever. Yeah. Comedians got a comedian. Funny, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, he blocked me. I was like, well, all right. And then I was like, oh, let me just make one for fun. And I made this thing called the Meth Yeti. And the Meth Yeti <laughs> was a Yeti on meth. It came with a bag of meth. And I just had super fun with the design. He's like abandoning his his kids and just like, uh, and I posted that. I'm like, here's the Meth Yeti. And pe- the internet flipped out. Like it went kind of sort of viral. Jeez. And some tattoo company in, I want to say like Bryan, Texas, by Houston Direction, messaged me. They're like, how much for the Meth Yeti? I was like, well... I think I sold them for like 50 bucks. Wow. You know? And so that, so now every year, the first year, my first design is a different Yeti. Oh, cool. So I did uh, Trash Yeti. Uh, I did Smack Yeti. Uh, I just did BDSM Yeti. I think it's it's called like Daddy Yeti. I forget what it's called. nice. And so they're all themed out Yetis. But anyway, (laughs) um, then it started taking off from there and people started messaging, how do I get one? How do I make one? And I'm like, well, this I can't torture. So this might be a thing. And yeah. then I just went crazy with it. Yeah, no, it's cool. Then I like once, I, once like the cool. idea started popping, I was like, well, fuck it. Like, this is a way yeah. I can survive creatively. And um, it kind of took on a life of its own. And now it's a full-fledged, like, when I'm not on the road uh, or trying to finish this new book that I'm 500 pages into and almost done with. Um, nice. I'm working on toys. Yeah. So That's uh, cool. Yeah, I just did a bunch of custom orders. And now it's crazy because, like, uh, the artist Raven Pettibon, Black Flag, uh, did all the Black Flag art. We started trading art in the mail. What? Because he liked my stuff and message. Like, we kind of sort of knew each other. And so last time I was in Brooklyn, I went to his studio. And, nice. it's just that, and like, David Lynch has one in his office. Dang, like, damn. the Lost Highway one I made is in David Lynch's office. <laughs> People got in touch with me. And, like, uh, and so it's surreal and weird. Yeah, no, but awesome. awesome. Yeah. Like, awesome, but it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Yeah. Under the your art's so cool. JT you did customs. your you did your like album covers and well, I commissioned a lot of the album okay. covers. For it felt it would feel gross to me to do my own art for All my right. own covers, but I'm very hands on with the aesthetic of what I want. Yeah, and dude, so it's, it's so you. Yeah, too. yeah. I'm very with the altercation stuff. I'm very brand yeah. particular. Um, so for my last record, Swamp Beast on 800 Pound Gorilla. Uh, that was a, a guy out of Cleveland that I had just seen. He had done some like Dead Boys art and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Really, really liked yeah. his stuff. And I was like, I'm going to hit this guy up. Nice. And I did. And he I just commissioned him and paid it. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've always been about the art stuff. I think that's, especially on vinyl, you know, it's got to look good. It looks great. Yeah. Thanks. Well, uh, I had to cut this show. Yeah, no, well, we had a show. Like yeah, a we got a sh- hour. Yeah, sh- a show. So uh, before we get out of here, first of all, thank you for being here. No, thank yeah, you yeah, very much. I'm sorry, so running gun today. We no, no thank you for 20 us. minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, so tell us where can everyone follow you and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, at JT Custom Toys on Instagram, I'm really uh, on that quite a bit. That's where I post the toys first. That and there's a Facebook group, just JT Custom Toys. Uh, at JT Haberset, I think, is my Facebook. If you go to jtcomedy.com, it has all yeah, my yeah, links to all yeah. my social <laughs> stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's where I post. There's, there's Patreon also. If you go to Patreon, look up JT Customs or JT Custom Toys. that will pop up there. I put all the designs and the on-sale dates for that stuff there. Oh, nice. yeah. Um, and, yeah, I've been working on this secret project for the last three years. Uh, I've been secretly writing an oral history of stand-up book, yeah. which is almost done (laughs) and in the hands of editorial publisher folk right now. So I'm waiting on final word on that. That's exciting. Yeah. I've spent the last three years. Anytime I was in LA or New York sitting down with some of the biggest names in comedy. That's great. Get it talking about, it's going to be not the really history from like, the eighties and boom of that. It's yeah. from like basically the Mr. Show alternative era nineties onward to now. Wow. And so that I've been working on 
every spare minute I have, and it's going to be this 500-page monster. So that's good. Interviewed all the kids in the hall, all the Whoa. comedians of comedy. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Todd Glass, Kudane, James Adomian, Big Murray stuff. Banford. Like, so it's going to be... That's a awesome. really exciting project. So that is, and Pepitone writes the intro. Oh, so. yes. <laughs> Me um, screams the intro. Yeah, he's. You can feel the scream. Yeah. in the intro for that. <laughs> so yeah, so that and uh, altercationcomedyfest dot com has all the details on that. That's November thirteenth through the sixteenth yeah. in Austin. Great festival. Great yeah, festival. thank you, man. You yeah, both absolutely. been there before. Yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, I'm really excited by the lineup. It's going to drop, like I said, in August. All things nice. I, I I keep holding because I want this headliner so bad, and they really want to do it. Yeah. So it's just a matter of like, just gotta wait on Hell these yeah. agents. It's to worth get it. This It'll be worth together. it. It will be. It yeah. will be worth it. So, All right, thank you guys. Thank yeah. you, man. So Appreciate good to see you. Yeah. Easy peasy. We are back. That was our buddy, episode eighteen, JT Habersat. Yeah, make sure to go check out JT at JT Custom Toys on Instagram. Yeah, he's he just released a, a new batch of stuff, and then also Altercation Fest is happening uh, in uh, November. You guys will see Tyler there, and uh, I think there's still be maybe some tickets on sale. It's getting close to sold out, yeah. so always sells out. What a what a great thing. Um, you know what time it We're is? We're just jumping into it. We're getting right into. You hear it? Woohoo! Hack oh, watch. Oh, hack watch. Bro, you kick us off. Give me something dirty. Oh man, here we go. This is fresh. <laughs> oh, I know. This, this is, is a fresh wound. <laughs> um, surprisingly, I'm getting a lot of pushback from my last one. You know, but uh, that's okay. Uh, but I'm sure those people were. I'm dead. Um, um, <laughs> they're not listening. That's yeah, they're sure. not listening. Obviously, <laughs> we've uh, only got fourteen listeners. I mean, <laughs> we got way more than that. we're like a, we double had, digits. So. We had over seven hundred <laughs> YouTube. I gotta check see what iTunes and Spotify yeah, is doing. They, they could be in the millions. We might be. Hell, we yeah, might we, be. We might be Africa's most popular podcast. What's it gonna be? Okay, because uh, we talked about Africa three times. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we said South Africa so. and Nigeria. Oh, that's all right. What's up, Koo? Uh <laughs> Uh, I right. who's from Nigeria. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I think he said no. He said Niger- no. He says favorite African. So, but I assume it's Nigeria. Um, <laughs> it's racist. I think he's, he scammed me out a few shows. No, just kidding. Uh, he's like, can I do ten? He does fifteen. I'm like, hey man. All right. I need you to give me ten first, <laughs> yeah. and I'll give you fifteen back. <laughs> you give me the fifteen. I give you the ten. You take the ten. You go to your bank. You cash it. You send me back thirty. What? All right. <laughs> Comedian scales. I'm sorry, Koo. Oh, you're booking. Oh, actually, you can see Koo. We'll talk about that in a yeah, second. Because, yeah. uh, um, all right. You want to get booked? I got it. So I have a new, I have a new uh, submission form online. It's really nice. You can put in like you fill out some things. Uh, what you're interested in. It has a link where you can put your uh, video clip, even a picture of yourself. It's very streamlined for me. It gives me like a whole list of everyone. It's really great. It's on the website? On the website. I updated it. It's the that little submission thing. Can't you beat know? it. Can't beat it. So I've had a few people who already did not do that. They just emailed. I get it. It's, it's fine. Sometimes it's hard to read. But if you're going to message the Facebook and then we, and we say, hey, yeah, everything is on the website now. And then, and then you go submit there, and then you let us know you submit it. Great, thank you. And then you literally wait 18 hours to follow up. Hey, did you get my submission? Okay, we 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 got it. Just hang tight. And then constant reminding every day to to get booked. Not every day, but close enough. Yeah. And then like it's not like I'm very I'm very dainty on my messages. I'm yeah. very like, hey, I'm sorry for bothering you. Like I tiptoe around things. And that's not what you're getting. And that's not what I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you pressure me, I will send you a link for comedy books. But anyway, that was fun. I do. Uh, so just yeah. J- yeah, I was just say just like when you're when you're booking, like you got to understand, like if someone may be getting 20, 30 messages, uh, you're also not a full time comedy producer who that's the only thing they do. Put that aside. <laughs> Put that aside. You got to figure out, like, even if if I was running a club, that like that's all I did, you know, and I'm booking all this stuff. A, you know, getting a lot, it, it's a lot to go through. So you don't want to piss anyone off, yeah. and you and like, and so I always, uh, in, per, you know, approach anyone like, hey, thank you, kill them with kindness, boom, 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 you know, whatever. Just, but if you're being pushy and you're trying to get booked, I had two of them today alone. Not even that same guy. I had another dude, and it was just like shot another me a message thing. on here, and then here. I'm like, what? Just not, not have a heart. Just like. You got to understand. It, you, how would you do if you went to a job? You walked into a place. Hey, are y'all hiring? 
Okay, cool. You come back tomorrow. Oh, right, you're hiring? No, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, I will send a follow up email the next day, though. Yeah, but that's it's more like a thank you, though. It's a thank you. It's not <laughs> yeah. a yo, what's up? Yeah, right. when am I get in here? Yeah, yeah. When am I? Yo, you talk to HR yet? <laughs> yo, I didn't even got my insurance card yet. Uh, no one's owed anything. So that's the thing, too. Yeah. I never expect anything from people. Right. I shoot messages. If I get it, great. Same. That's it. So just, you know, just if you want it, you got to be you I think you got to be nice and respectful. I also think it's important to understand something. Lafayette Comedy is not a club that's open several days a week. We don't have showcases every week that people can get on. And I get people may not know that. Yeah. And but, so Yeah. I, I think that that does get lost in translation sometimes. Like, in order to be booked here, really, realistically, you need to, if you want a headline, you have to have a draw or something to offer. No questions asked, right? Let, and if let me, you let don't, me put a pin right then there. your chances are a little bit smaller. Let me put a pin right there. Yeah, And I get it. I would love, and what you said is exactly right, and maybe I need to be more, I don't know, more direct in saying that. Like, it's not like I have a club where I'm doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, And you could Sunday, just give someone 10 weekdays. minutes. You or, can't. Yeah. Or I can say, hey, you're. Com- I would love, I've been trying to get that, where I had another room where you're coming through on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever, and I go, hey, yeah, we got a spot. It's not, You know, I'm not breaking, the, ba- breaking the, the bank on it or whatever. Oh, I'll give you a nice deal, and we can put you in here. I don't. One, my dates are limited for this club because I'm competing with conferences and everything else, and this room set up right now podcast. for a private. Oh yeah, po- our, our <laughs> podcast uh, that records once a month. Uh, but I'm dealing with wedding receptions and private parties, so you can see right now there's no chair set up for the show on Saturday, and we got 600 people coming through Saturday. Right. So it's I'm I'm competing. I'm dealing with the most popular hotel in town that's set up for conferences. Even if they don't use a room, they just don't they don't have the parking yep. ability. So. When I get my dates and I have to like sometimes say, like, look, I'm sorry, I'm waiting for available dates. And sometimes I can throw them out. But if not, my priorities are the big national comedians because that's the, that's the draw. That's yep. that's really what it's known for. And I have with a bigger room like this, I have to have that many people to make it worthwhile for the venue. No doubt. So I, I get it. And, and it's like I wish I had another room that I could put other people in there. But, you know, I wish I had, you know, this is the fat man. I wish I had a little boy. I don't. That yeah. sounds weird. Don't clip that. Uh, <laughs> oh, too bad. I'm I wish I had a right small now. room. All right. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I already that, posted it. OK, damn it. You're quick, man. <laughs> I got to delete this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I wish I had another room. And, and that, that was my goal. The last where we doing our open mic yeah. to work on that. Now it's kind of scrambling again. But. Yeah, I get it, but no matter what, even if I was booking two shows seven days a week, be courteous, be respectful, courteous. understanding. Because yeah. I don't want to. But if a if a big comedian did that to me, I would want to book right. him. No, and I I've, agree. Yeah. I've said no to several because that's I don't want to deal with. Big it, so. like how big? Three hundred pounds? Uh, Four fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Ralphie. Ralphie. <laughs> Ralphie May now. He might be the only four. He's trying to get in now. Yeah, <laughs> he's a lot less weight now. <laughs> Cut that. That's the kind of shit we're working with here, Lafayette yeah. Comedy. <laughs> you did. You want to show? We'll talk. All right. Killing it. All right. Go ahead. All right. Um, my hack watch is uh, something that I've seen um, a lot of recently at open mics, but also I am very guilty of this, and it is a constant like rage against the dying light situation where you have to you have to do this as a comedian. I think, I think they open for slipknot, rage against the dying <laughs> light. Okay. Deliver your jokes the way they're meant to be delivered every time. Oh and don't phone it in. Ooh. It is N- name names. No, I'm kidding. It's. Yeah. I mean, I, they know. It, they will Several, listen to yeah. this, and they will know, and they'll know that I'm not talking shit because it's like an honest conversation we've had. Mm-hmm. But multiple different people have had this conversation with recently, where it's like, and I've said it about myself, where it's like, I walked off the stage and I was just like, you know, all those jokes kill, and they did like okay tonight, and it's all because I wasn't into it. Yeah. I didn't do all the little tiny things that I worked on to get those jokes to where they need to be. I didn't work on my timing. For whatever reason, I phoned it in that night. Yeah. And it is, you do yourself such a disservice because when when we do that, we don't learn anything. Yeah. You've literally gone on stage, touched a microphone, because that's what we got to do to get better is keep touching a microphone. But when you phone in your jokes and don't deliver them like you mean to deliver them or like they deserve to be delivered, 
you're not getting any benefit out of it. Yeah. You're going to listen to that recording, and all you're going to learn is, oh, I need to deliver this better. <laughs> if Slipknot would have came out without the mask, right? it would have been a good show, but it wouldn't have been Slipknot. Right, yes. If, if Marilyn Manson comes out without pantyhose and makeup, he's just Brian Warner. That's his name? Yeah, that's his name, Brian Warren. From Wonder Years? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to start a rumor, guys. God, sorry. I know it's been 30 that's years. That's how rumors get started. That's how rumors get started. Believe they, it or not. They could trace it back to us. <laughs> um, I, you've got to you got to really love this. And um, it's hard, man. It's a very hard thing to do. Um, but when you get on stage, take your time. It's it's funny to me when I hear I can hear somebody kill, and then hear them do the exact same jokes a yeah. couple weeks later, and it's the same joke, same tags, and it's just not the same. I tell you what goes in my head, uh, and and I can be guilty of that too. You go and do a show, and there's five people, mm. and you're like, why should I deliver with the same energy? And I get it because you're like, what, what what's what's the winning goal here? Like, what's gonna happen? But I've seen people who are beast like, you know, like your Sam's Talents, your Dan Altons, who have that energy, who are just like big presences on stage, perform in front of five people just like they did yeah. 500 people. And you have to do that. If you don't, then you, you're cutting everything short yep. unless you're just a very calm demeanor comedian, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll give an antidote that is right in line with what you're saying. I opened up for Neil Rubenstein at Library Riot in Lake Charles a couple of years ago for seven fucking people. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the best shows I've ever been a part of. Yeah. From top to bottom, the host, the opener, myself, and Neil delivered more, like the best comedy show those seven people have probably ever seen. I mean, even open mic sometimes where there's no one in the audience, just comedians. I those know. can be great yep. too, but it's just, you know. And you know, it's not, you did say energy, and energy is a part of it, but it's not just energy, right? Because you can be a low energy comedian and still not phone it in. Yeah. You got to hit your timing. It's yeah. about, yeah. you know, the breaths you're taking, the your pacing, like everything, you know. Huh? Yeah. I'm I'm one of my favorite things right now. We were talking about Jacob Gidry earlier and you were talking about how good he did on that Stone Drunk Sober show. I said no such thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw Jacob completely murder last night at my open mic nice. headlining. And uh, I think Jacob has come such a long way. And the things that I'm seeing that makes him better are the same things that made me better recently. And it's taking your time and understanding how you can utilize dead air instead of being scared of it to deliver stronger punchlines. Yeah. I, it's literally the difference between counting to one or two mm instead of half a second before the punchline. Turning your head, looking a certain way to make emphasis yeah. right before you deliver the joke. I mean, I'm watching this guy uh, and I'm seeing all these little things and I'm just so proud. And uh, it, those kinds of things, it's real easy to take for granted. Yeah. And when you work on getting there, you got to do it every time. That's also just the process of working and knowing your bits, too, because yep. sometimes a look at someone, not even related to the punchline, just a look at someone can trigger. Make a laugh. Yeah, it's yes. crazy. Yeah. Comedy is the best, man. Sometimes. Hack watch. Hack watch. Yeah, you hacks learn something today. Yeah, watch. Hacks. That's literally the segment. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Ounce of Hope Aquaponic Cannabis Company. Ounce of Hope provides high-quality CBD and Delta-8 through an advanced aquaponics system for the utmost in quality products. Check them out at ounceofhope.com. And now it's time for Rex. Rex with a Z. Rex, Rex in effects. Boy. Okay. Rex recommendations. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I don't know where Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> All right, my uh, my rec for this uh, episode is someone I talked about a little earlier, past Lafayette comedy guest, which we will uh, we will be having back, is old Greg Fitzsimmons, his new special. Fitz Dog. Fitz Dog Radio. Uh, it is called You Know Me, and it was filmed last year at the Comedy Mothership. So it's kind of fitting that, you know, uh, I got to see him back at the Mothership. Uh, it's a great special. It looks really good over there. And it's... Wow. So funny, and he—he's just—he's so good messing with the crowd. He's—he's just—he's a 
doing it 30, 35 years. Professional just, man. just underrated, a right? You don't oh, hear hands down, anybody yeah. who knows comedy knows yeah. Fitzsimmons, but your average person don't understand. He yeah. is a legend, a killer from Boston, I believe. Yeah. Just, yeah. com- just he, the, I think one he, of those East Coast legends. I listened to a, uh, a few podcasts, and I think he was also in New York too, mm-hmm. and he did a few other things. But uh, yeah, he is so good. Um, he was he was great when he was here. Nicest dude in the world. Uh, and I got to say hi to him. I wore my little because he gave me a Greg Fitzsimmons pin that he sells. That's you wore his only that to show. Nice. I wore it, and because uh, I went up, he and he's asking people, "You want a pin?" And I walked up. He goes, "Yeah, I got a pin." I'm like, "Yeah." And like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was great, great, uh, great special. Definitely worth watching it. Uh, worth watching it. Greg Fitzsimmons, you know me. What's it on YouTube? Uh, uh, yeah, Netflix. YouTube. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, For free. I've got two recs this week. All right. Um, a little off the beaten path type of recommendations. One of them is a, it's an investment wreck because oh right now there's only a couple episodes out and the quality is questionable, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> go ahead. I'm going to give a shout out to our homies, uh, Brock White Lions, Aaron Heltz and Sean Richardson, who have a podcast called The Bad Opinions Podcast. And these guys were not smart enough to think of a name that's original. So if you just search Bad Opinions Podcast, you're not going to find it. So make sure you're looking for the little yellow logo with the microphone. Um, But no, it's actually pretty funny. And these guys are all funny people, off the cuff, very good. Um, as soon as they get the audio quality working, it'll be worth listening to. So that's what I mean by it's an investment. <laughs> if you see how close we're talking to the microphones oh, right, right now. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. last episode, there was somebody doing this the whole time, and you're just like... <laughs> Sorry, right. it's, uh, it's the perils. You know, Bad Opinions Podcast, Brock White Lines, Aaron Heltz, Sean Richardson's Hell fun, yeah. funny fellas. Second one, no another... This one is is not an investment. Go pay attention to this person right now. I've been... Uh, really enjoying Mary Ryan Brown's hmm. content. Mary um, Ryan Brown from uh, Mississippi? That's correct. Nice. Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg original. Hattiesburg. Um, she is uh, an awesome comedian out of that area. Um, we've had her at my open mic. She completely killed. She did Stone vs. Drunk at Rally Cat. How she, yeah, and I heard she did very well. Yeah, she did, yeah. yeah that was I a night heard, my yeah. wife had You weren't able to make it, but yeah. Her hospital, yeah. Um, so she's doing a seer, like a these real series that are just absolutely hilarious. It's like Southern wife tropes and just very funny. I nice. mean, honestly, she is such a good writer. Wait, All- is she white? Yeah. I didn't notice. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious for a second. Oh, I was like, I once had somebody actually <laughs> surprised when they found out Drew Brees was white. So I thought we were having that kind of moment just there where I was going to be like, what? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but she, so she does these, uh, aw- this awesome video, and it's so well written. There's so many good little jokes. Nice. And she does these minute, 90 second videos that are hilarious. She also has a podcast called Super Freak, ah, um, Super Freak which is sometimes she does episodes on her own. Sometimes she has comedians or other interesting people on. Uh, Mary Ryan Brown, check her out. Yeah. Definitely worth it. And that was Rex. Rex, indeed. I want to give a big shout out and thanks to our sponsor, Gator Custom Graphics. They are a local full service sign shop specializing in banners, wide format printing, and vehicle graphics. From your business card to your storefront, Gator has your sign and printing needs covered. Check them out at GatorCustomGraphics.com. All right, on September 25th, I will be at Adopted Dog Brewery with this guy right here. Uh, love that place. It's going to be a hell of a no time. Hopefully no rain. Hopefully, right, like, yeah. The like last, the blonde melon song. We tried booking the show a month ago or so, or over a month ago. <laughs> and right now it's 45% chance of rain. Jesus. But that well, can all change. Well, fine. That's fine. Uh, we've got some friends from Houston coming. Yep. Ryan Rogers from New Orleans. Kua Genti. Uh, gonna be a good one. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, again, this is soccer season. Can't say it enough. <laughs> I love little girls soccer. Uh, so, <laughs> so I will be. Uh, I'll be. Uh, the next big thing I guess I have to announce is Altercation Fest. Yeah. I think yep. since I probably I don't even know if I was got accepted the last time we were on the podcast. I don't think so. But I got accepted to Altercation Fest. Uh, this will be my second time going. I'm super excited. It is November. 13th through the 16th. I don't know when I'm going to be on, but I'm going to be out there the whole time. Holler at me. Come see me. 
That's all I got to talk about. Oh, uh, follow me everywhere at the Tyler A. YouTube, go to thetylera.com for all my dates, both of them. Uh, Jason, what about you? All right. Uh, so I'm going to be on that ad adopted dog show too. Uh, tickets to Lafayette Comedy uh, If you're watching this, just know that Saturday night this past, you missed Tim Meadows, SNL star. Uh, two sold out shows. Um, the 28th, doing Stone versus Drunk versus Sober at Rally Cap. Uh, sorry, in Lake Charles. In Lake Charles, my bad. Um, October 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I'm doing a three day run. It may turn into four with old Dan St. Germain. We're doing uh, The Manship on October 3rd, Lafayette on the 4th, and Lake Charles on the 5th. That is of October. Uh, let's see what else we got coming up. Uh, October 10th, we got Dolce Sloan, Emmy Award winning comedian. She just won at the Emmys this past week. I uh, forget what she won for, but she won an Emmy. So, boom, that's going to be good. That's going to be the ACA. On October 11th, a Friday night, we got Gator Fight at Gator Cove is back. We Hell got a yeah. good lineup on that. We're going to see Dan Soder. It's been a while since that one happened. Yeah, it has, because the last one was uh, Daryl Philsberg, so, um, uh, and I wasn't there because we were with Mark Norman. Uh, October 18th, we got the golden ticket winners from Kill Tony, um, uh, Rick, um, uh Diaz, there we go. I couldn't think of it. Uh, Heath and Enrique will be here. Uh, so much more. I'm going to see Corn with my kid. That's going to be cool. October 24th, we got Mike Eaton. We'll be here in Club 337 on a Thursday. I'm going to try to squeak on that if, if, if I can talk to the booker. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> October 25th, we got Wait What? The Return of the Comedy Drinking Game from New Orleans. And that Saturday, we got Stone versus Drunk versus Sober here three nights in a row. Um, we are um, bringing a few things. We just announced uh, Sean Patton will be here at the end of December. We're also bringing him to Rally Cap. Bro. But <clears throat> I got to announce this. Okay. And I'm glad you brought it up earlier. And we edited it out. We edited it out. <laughs> but it's back, baby. November 9th. That's a Saturday. Our early show, 7.30 show. Pretty early for a Saturday. Pretty early. You know why. Uh, we are bringing a brand new show to a little venue called Michael's Men's Club. Heard of it. Not the craft store. I may or may not have a whole entire bit about that place. <laughs> I may get you on the show. It's The show's called Between Two Poles. I they love have, it. That's awesome. Because they have two poles. I'm totally still in Between Two Ferns, the logo. That's We're doing brilliant. all that. brilliant. Between Two Poles at Michael's Men's Club. It's going to be a stand-up comedy show. No ladies on stage or men or, or whatever. Uh, it's going to be 7.30 to 9-ish. And then after that, then the ladies kick up with their stuff. We'll have a little intermission. If you come to the show, you don't have to pay the cover for the late night fiesta. So, yeah. Oh, I, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't have to pay to stay. You said so. fiesta, and I was like, there's a fiesta? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, what's happening? That night's going to be there crazy. Will be, <laughs> there will be tacos, but oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to eat and then siesta. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> That's sleep. Uh, <laughs> I could sleep. You missed my tacos joke. Anyway, no, all I this. I just didn't think it was funny. <laughs> it's a strip club, and I made a tacos joke. I'm joking. Joke. I didn't okay. get it. <laughs> and I think it's funny now that I got it. <laughs> I could ski. Uh, <laughs> uh, every. <laughs> Why, why are we not millionaires? <laughs> no, no, We're so man. fucking We funny. make each other laugh. All right. uh, tickets, everything at LafayetteComedy.com. Social medias la at Lafayette Comedy. Uh, I am at the JP Leonard on all the socials. Yeah, at the Tyler Arsenault. Uh, no, at the Tyler A everywhere. Uh, also, every Tuesday, downtown Lafayette, Cite de Arts. The only open mic. No, that's not true. One of two open mics in Lafayette. The other one is on Sundays at uh, Green Room. But yeah, every Tuesday at CTA downtown, open mic. I host it. John Merrifield hosts it. Most of the time, we have other people host it. Honestly, I keep saying I'm the host, but it's no one knows what's going on. Yeah, it's <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Check Comedy's us out. The best. Comedy's the best. We won't take so much of a long. Our next one, we got uh, Ian Laura up and Mia Jackson are our next episodes. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.